Stratosphere, radical chic, the me generation, the right stuff. All brilliantly incisive terms invented by one of the great chroniclers of American society during the last 50 years, Tom Wolfe. The man in the white suit with a sartorial style as elegant and as sharp as his writing. Wolfe adopted the white suit as a trademark early in 1962 when he landed a job on the New York Herald Tribune. The young dandy from Richmond, Virginia certainly cut a dashing figure in metropolitan New York. But it was his distinctive brand of high-energy experimental reporting about popular culture, dubbed the new journalism, that really got him noticed. I don't know why anybody objects to the megalomania of the American automobile. They're not built to move your body in the first place. They're built to transport your mind. The 60s was the decade that formed Wolf, and one he was instrumental in defining. But he's probably now best known for his 1987 novel, The Bonfire of the Vanities. A blistering satire on New York's obsession with money, ambition and greed. Now Wolf's written a new novel, Back to Blood, which promises or rather threatens to do for Miami what a bonfire of the vanities did for New York, namely expose the simmering class and race tensions, the seething political corruption and the human and sexual foibles of the city's residents. So Tom, why did you choose Miami as the setting for this book? Well, my original idea was to write a book about immigration to the U.S. And then, I don't know how it dawned on me, but wait a minute, Miami is everybody you can think of, including not just people from Latin America, uh, but people from Russia, huge Haitian um, population. And the Venezuelans are coming in now because of um, uh, Chavez. Did you choose Miami as this this? melting pot, I suppose, would be the cliche, although in, in, in your book it's more like a sort of simmering pot. Oh, uh, well, actually, I think of it as a melting pot <clears throat> uh, that's full of um, metal, different metal units, but they never melt. They just, they kind of, they kind of rattle. <laughs> they rattle against each other. And the Cubans politically dominate the place. It's the only city that I can find in the world where that is run politically by people from another country uh, with another language and another culture is a very unusual situation. And, and the uh, American blacks who've been there a long time usually uh, really resent the Cuban police. In slums like this one, Overtown, Black people looked upon the Cuban cops as foreign invaders who one day dropped from the sky like paratroopers and took over the police department and started shoving black people around. Black people who had lived in Miami forever. You were never an armchair journalist and you've not been an armchair novelist. How important do you think it is that you get out into the field there well, into life? Well, frankly, I think it's, 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 it's all import important. Um, and whenever a young writer, and there are not many of them, pays me the compliment of asking me, uh, you know, about how to get it, get started in this uh, field of writing, I always say, first leave the building <laughs> and uh, just take a look at what's at what's out there. I gather that somebody. Um sort of got wind of this research that you were doing and actually followed you around for a while with a camera. I owe a lot to uh, him. Oscar Corral is his name. is. He was a former reporter for the Miami Herald, and he was the first person that took me to some of these places, like Hialeah. So, Tom, what's the basic question you have about Santeria? Is there something you want to know about? I could ask you this. Where in a house would you okay. typically find these figures? They're big figures. If you were trying to find the, like, the one big theme of Back to Blood, what would you say it was? My, my good friend John Timoney, who used to be uh, mayor of, uh, of Miami, said, New York is all about money, Washington is all about power, and Miami is all about sex. 
But there is a lot, there's a lot of sex in the book. When I was in Miami doing research, I went to a strip club. I swear it was research. The image I remember most distinctly was of the girls, they're totally nude, uh, and their backside is to the audience, and men, you won't believe how many numbers, come up with dollar bills and put them in the cleft of their bottoms. Um, I mean, you're talk I'm talking about things that look like a peacock's tail. There's so many pieces of green paper. But what I can't quite work out is whether you're fascinated by the the, the, the sort of seething, weird energy of it all, or whether you think it's actually, you know, horrible when for, these, for these girls <laughs> to be doing, you know, how desperate must they be? Uh, well, or I, I can't work out your attitude. Well, I, I'm, I don't have an attitude of Christian charity towards it uh, and the fate of these poor girls. Uh, but see, what, do you think that they're um, exerting their economic freedom and I don't. I wouldn't put it in just in theoretical. I just think it's wild, uh, and somebody should write about this. I mean, I love to find, I love to find things that are really extraordinary. Everybody knows about, but they haven't been written about, like the this Columbus Day Regatta. Come on, said Norman with a lewdly happy face. This you've got to see. Now it begins. The blonde with the breasts did a few mild shimmies with her hips, showing her chorus of admirers how taut her pectoral glories were, how they stuck out, defying gravity. What begins, she said. The regatta is essentially an orgy, said Norman. That's what I want you to see. But he wasn't looking at Magdalena when he said it. Like every other male on the boat, he only had eyes for the sprung free naked breasts. At the end of writing the book, did you feel warmth towards Miami? Did you feel, you know, Miami's a place that you love? Or are your feelings more ambivalent than that? No, it was more, look at the people. Uh, they are remarkable. It's not, I'm not saying, look how wacky they are, or how bad they are. Uh, it's just, get an eyeful, you, you're going to enjoy this. That has been my uh, feeling with everything, everything I've done. Well, it was custom car makers in California or... Uh, You've identified something that's amazing and you want to tell the world about it. And, I, I mean, I love it when people say, like uh, John Updike, that your book is not literature, it's journalism. I say, good, that's great. <laughs> that's a, it must be a good book. Yeah, must be good. I, I'd read it. It's been a pleasure to meet Andrew. you. Andrew?